travel sketching is the best way to make the most out of beautiful places and amazing experiences. But let's start from the beginning. Cappuccino is essential and helps the process. All right, starting with a frame here and blocking in the major shapes. Linear perspective is definitely useful in the built environment and atmospheric perspective is always essential when doing landscape paintings in nature. If we can combine both of those, getting the linear perspective here in the underdrawing is crucial, we can create a sense of depth and that sense of depth is one of the main things that creates an emotional impact when someone looks at your painting. Now getting ready here for the biggest wash is always the most challenging. Mixing up an accurate Caribbean blue ocean color, doing a couple swatches here to test some color mixes out. And this big wash is always really uh, a little bit nerve wracking. So take a deep breath. Here we go. Since you have one shot at this with watercolor, it's best to do it fast and go boldly. You might be tempted to fuss with this big wash like I did right there, but shake it out once you're done and let it dry and get ready for the next step. Not everybody is going to use watercolor or color at all for their travel sketching, but I find that watercolor is really great on the road. And one of the things that captures the feeling of a place the most is the color of that place. Right now I'm filling in some of the local color and try to keep it simple. Try to use a simplified palette as much as possible. I wish that I had kept some of these background buildings a little bit more simplified. I tried to get more specific colors and lost some of the unity that would have been created if I had just used the same color throughout, especially for those distant objects. Adding in the foreground elements, a little bit more details and a little bit more uh, variation of colors in the foreground, however, can be useful. So save your details and the, your dark spots for the foreground. You can see I pushed the values in the background. Um, that is fine and that's what it actually looked like, but now I'm going to need to push the values in the foreground as well. Otherwise, the background will pop more than the foreground. I bought a little bit of local bread from a kid that came up to me and you can see it slowly disappearing there um, uh, next to my cappuccino. Adding some more details and value variation in that water was really crucial and also challenging. And I'm also trying to get in the details of these people in the foreground even after they moved. Um, I'm putting in some information here about what direction I'm looking in and I think this is something that a lot of urban sketchers um, could benefit learning from nature journaling, but including some metadata, location, maybe even the coordinates of where you are, the direction you're looking in, temperature, things like that are actually a real fun addition to a travel sketch or any urban sketching. All right, so this was a dangerous move here. I used perylene green, which is my darkest watercolor, and I added in these dark spots in the background. That is fine, but you just have to make sure that you balance that with even more dark and more contrast in the foreground because that is one of the aspects of atmospheric perspective. Things in the distance show less contrast, less saturation, less warmth, and less detail than things in the foreground. So if you get carried away with your background, just remember you're going to have to balance that out in the foreground. So I tried to add a little bit more darkness, some shadows, um, but barely got the balance there. I think the background pops a little bit more than it should, but now is the question of whether I should ink this or not. And inking is a classic part of travel sketching and a lot of people are just going to do ink and not even do color. Here in this case, I made the decision to use ink over my watercolor to um, add that uh, foreground contrast and detail that will make it pop out. And I'm not going to add any ink lines to the background. That's one of the things I love about this Fudayaku brush pen is that it has gray on one end and it has black on the other. So by doing my underdrawing in gray, that allows me to create this um, atmospheric perspective by using the black ink only in the foreground 
And even though I sort of messed up those values a little bit and made those um, background trees too dark, I can use the black ink in the foreground to uh, reinstate that atmospheric perspective and that feeling of depth. So whatever type of travel sketching you're doing, making sure you pay attention to some of the rules of linear perspective, but also the rules of atmospheric perspective is going to give your travel sketch much more of that emotional feeling. And I think that emotional feeling is the best part of a travel sketch. If you got something out of this video, then like and subscribe right here. And if you're one of the Nature Journal Show's hardcore fans and this episode wasn't quite long enough for you, check out this playlist right here because I guarantee you there's still a lot of videos that you've never watched before. Bye.